So today we're gonna be taking a look at the Sony FX3. Now I know a lot of people are gonna say, Armando, this is just a Sony A7S III in a different body. And to that, I'll say, you're pretty much right. However, let's look at it in a different way. Let's look at it how car manufacturers label their vehicles. For example, I think the FX3 is like the AMG version of a Mercedes or the Nismo version of a Nissan vehicle. And typically those variants like the AMG and Nismo have different components that make them slightly better, whether it's suspension, aero parts like carbon fiber, or even interior components. And that's the way I view the FX3. It's those small little things that make a difference for day-to-day -day use usability. And I know this might ruffle a couple of people's feathers, but I believe, in my opinion, the Sony FX3, those small changes make it much better for video use in comparison to the Sony A7S III. Now let's talk about the differences between the FX3 and the Sony A7S III. For one, the FX3 does not have an EVF. And personally, I'm a big fan of that. I never use the EVF, and I prefer the smaller form factor of the FX3 in comparison to the A7S III. You will notice that it's a bit chunkier because there is an internal fan inside, so you don't have to really worry about cooling or this camera ever overheating. And because of that, it is chunkier and it has a slightly bigger grip than the A7S III, which again, Usability-wise, it's much more comfortable to hold. You also have different record buttons that you can use throughout the camera and tally lights, which I really, really love. Something else that you'll notice with this camera is different quarter 20 mounts throughout the body, which means that you don't really need to use a cage with this camera. Something else you'll notice is this power zoom rocker button up here, which will actually control any of your power zoom lenses, which is nice. And the layout and configuration is slightly different, and I would say more video focus than the Sony A7S III. The biggest thing though that you'll get with the FX3 is this top handle that also has two XLR inputs for your audio, giving you four channels of recording. Basically, you even have multiple safety tracks, which I really like. And if you were to try it and buy this separate handle for your Sony A7S III with the microphone, this alone will set you back $600. So with that out of the way, I do wanna talk about my experience using the Sony FX3 these last couple of weeks. And I realize what I'm about to say also applies to the Sony A7S III due to its similarities. And it's just a testament that Sony has been releasing some amazing cameras these last couple of months. So there's this particular shoot I did where I was literally the solo operator. We had to hike for about 20 minutes. We were taking two guitars, an amp, a little small little power generator, and we only had to travel with essentials. That meant that I could only take the FX3, a couple of lenses, some variable ND filters with step up rings, and then for power, I relied on this Anton Bauer battery base plate that gave me over nine hours of battery use, not even including the internal battery inside the camera. Now, I had to rely on autofocus because I was a one-man show here. I couldn't even bring lights. Everything was just as stripped down as possible, no gimbal, all handheld using the shotgun microphone with the top handle audio module. I filmed everything in s tone because I had very little time to do any color adjustment. And honestly, I was very impressed with the results. The autofocus worked fantastic, even with my talent having glasses and a hat. Everything just locked on. I was hand-holding the whole entire time, which meant that I this worked great. Again, the colors look beautiful. And because I filmed everything in S Cinetone, I thought that I was gonna lose a lot of dynamic range because I normally film in S-Log. I was actually surprised that I was able to retain those highlights and S Cinetones. And here's just a small clip so that you guys can see what I'm talking about. I haven't heard from you ass in two years. Suddenly want something from me Now that I'm snapping from Beverly Hills oh, So let's just skip hyping the winds Girl, you look fucking stupid Tell everyone you know me Just cause I'm doing big things 
Now, could have I done the same thing with the Sony a7S III and got similar results? Absolutely. In fact, the a7S III would have fit perfectly fine in that case that I used for the FX3. But there's just something about this camera, the more video feature focus that I appreciate using this over the a7S III. Now, it doesn't matter what camera you use, whether it's the a7S III, the R5, the FX3, I'm a true believer that the camera that you use needs to inspire you so that you can go out there and create content. And this is one of those cameras that I just keep picking up and I keep gravitating this. In fact, I'm thinking about switching to this setup and possibly even Sony because of this camera. Something else that has been inspiring me lately is this new service that I just signed up to called Canva. I've been using Canva to enhance my social media content. In fact, if you follow me on Instagram and you swiped up to watch this video, well, that story was created using Canva and it was super easy to use. And they have a bunch of different templates that you can choose from where you can quickly edit the text, you can add different elements, drag and drop your photos and create a dynamic story that will have more engagement. But it's not just for Instagram content. You can design anything. For example, YouTube thumbnails, a new YouTube intro for your channel, social posts, posters, logos, flyers, presentations, a resume, and a whole bunch more. Now Canva is completely free and it's cool because they give you access to over 250,000 templates, hundreds and thousands of photos, graphics, and a bunch of other perks. But if you really wanna take advantage of what Canva has to offer, make sure to sign up to Canva Pro. It's $9.99 a month, but they give you so much more, it's worth the price. Now Canva is so confident that you're gonna fall in love with their service that they're offering you guys a free 45 day trial to try out Canva Pro. All you need to do is make sure to use the link down below in the description, sign up to Canva Pro and make your content stand out. Why the hell would you run this game? Both my hands are tied. Afraid of thinking I dug my own grave. Fuck around with this strange and loose. Too afraid to lose it. So here's my final thoughts on the Sony FX3. I think that Sony did a good job with this camera and rather than asking why does this camera exist, we should be asking why does the Sony A7S III exist? Personally, I think this should have been the Sony a7S III and Sony could have done a lot of different things. Like for example, added something very similar like Blackmagic did with that electronic EVF, the detachable one. They could have done the same thing with this camera. Also, I don't feel that this merits the cinema line badging because there's a lot of cinema features that are missing and one would expect when a camera is called cinema to have and it doesn't. But it doesn't make this camera bad. It's still a great video camera, just like the Sony a7S S3. Now, as a Canon user, what other options do I have? The other option on a Canon side that is more video centric would be something like the C70. And personally, I take this over the C70 all day. Let me explain why. First of all, the autofocus on this camera is incredible. I mean, the Canon C70's autofocus is actually not that great. Also, the form factor of this camera, look how tiny it is in comparison to the massive DSLR body style that the C70 has. This is actually true full frame, none of this speed booster stuff, which I'm not really a fan of the whole speed booster thing because now that's just one more point of failure. And and also, you can't really use your RF lenses in full frame, which personally, I'm a big fan of RF lenses. Also, better recording options with the FX3. For example, I can actually get ProRes RAW externally using an Atomos Ninja 5, which just gives me more flexibility. Also, the Canon C70 has Mini XLR. I am not a fan of Mini XLR, where the FX3 has full-size XLR inputs via the top handle. And if I'm not running audio, I can just remove that top handle, put a different top handle if I'd like, run a monitor, or even fly this on a gimbal, which is gonna be much easier compared to the C70. And then lastly, price. I can pick up the Sony FX3, a wireless go-to microphone setup. I can do an Anton Bauer battery base plate, some Polar Pro ND filters, and a bunch of other accessories, and still be much cheaper than the Canon C70. And to summarize, this is an awesome camera, just like the Sony A7S III is an awesome camera, and I would highly recommend it. My name is Armando. Thanks again for watching, and you will catch me in the next one. Adios. 
Consider me, consider me, won't you consider me? I don't know what that's the words. <laughs> Any time of day, oh, uh, wait. Any time of place, any time of day. So I don't know the words. I don't know all of them. <laughs>